Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Jamie Collins, and Jamie is Executive Director of Girls Inc. of Carpinteria. Welcome, Jamie. Thank you for having me. Oh, gosh. I'm so excited that you're here because I always love hearing the wonderful programs and all the things you're doing in the lives of girls and families. And so maybe you can tell us what you're up to these days. Yeah, so it's been a busy couple of years for us um, since the pandemic and looking yes. at our programs and how to better serve the community. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we instituted as an organization was organizational values and oh. really taking those values to heart so that when tragedy strikes, um, we can not only serve our mission, but serve our community. That's a great idea. Yeah. Okay, so here we had this pandemic, all these problems, all these challenges, and you sort of made lemonade out of those lemons by saying, okay, let's just get ourselves centered here. Mm -hmm. What's important to us? What do we value? Mm -hmm. What do we really care about? And so now you're, you're going to use that for the benefit of all the girls, the whole program, mm -hmm. everything. I yeah. love it. Yeah, well, and, and Carpinteria is unique in that we become an island, right, when tragedy strikes. And we saw that sure. oh, absolutely. with every flood that happens when the 101 shut down. We don't have access to basic needs like food and yeah. emergency services and, right. and things. So, And we don't have a community center in Carpinteria. And so Girls Inc. really felt one of our values is community and really uh -huh. felt how can we adapt to best serve our girls, right? And in turn, by serving our girls, we're serving their families. And by serving the families, we're serving the greater community. So we're really taking a community-centered approach to the work that we do. Oh, gosh. That is yeah. a great way to, to look at it and to frame it all. And it's true. There is no real community center in Carpinteria. Yeah. So um, tell, us, tell us sort of the, the focus or the scope of Girls, Inc. What, what do girls get out of uh, of coming to your or of the organization. Yeah, so Girls Inc. nationally was founded in 1864, so right after our, the upheaval of the Civil War. So we've been wow. in the United States for a very, very long time. Um, and locally, Girls Inc. of Carpinteria was founded in the early 70s oh. as a one-bedroom, um, in a one-bedroom house serving 33 girls as a summer camp and then continued to grow. Um, and in the early 90s, the community came together to build our now forever home, the Girls Inc. of Carpinteria campus, in which we recently paid off our mortgage. So we're not going anywhere. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and now we serve about 1,000 youth through our programs. Our mission is to inspire girls to be strong, smart, and bold. Um, but we do both in-school programming. So we go into the schools and we serve boys and girls. And then we also do our pro-girl, girl-only centered programming on our campus in Carpinteria. That is great. So maybe you could give me an example. I think you've got some new programs too. But give me an example of um, when you say you go, go into the schools and you also mm -hmm. have them on your campus. Give me an example of a program for for maybe older girls. Yeah, so in the schools, in the middle school, at Carpentry Middle School, for 25 years, we've been teaching their comprehensive healthy sexuality programming. Mm -hmm. So we do girls and boys, we break them off um, by their identified gender. Um, and have honest conversations with them to make sure that they're educated and safe so that they can make informed decisions about healthy relationships. Um, and just kind of what to look for. It's all age appropriate and age relevant um, to, to give them the information they need to grow up to be strong, smart, and bold and, and make healthy choices for themselves. On our school campus, uh, we primarily serve younger girls. Um, primarily, we serve K kindergarten through eighth grade. Okay. Um, and there they get exposure to all different kinds of things. We really focus, we're an enrichment program, we're mm -hmm. not just an after school program. And so we look at it ourselves as an extension of the school day and introducing mm -hmm. girls to science, technology, engineering, and math or STEM. Um, or literacy components or sports. Um, most recently, we've introduced girls to pickleball and we're doing, um, we've done basketball and soccer and there's not a lot of youth sports in Carpentria, uh -huh. oh. so giving them a little taste of enrichment is, is part of what we do. So girls can choose, like, like you say, here. here's our list of uh, programs and they can choose what they, and is it, is it within the school 
time? This so it's we're day? primarily an after school program during okay. the school year. So they come to us right after school, okay, we feed okay. them snack, um, and then they go into their enrichment. So during the school year, they rotate through. So every week they're getting an introduction to STEM, to literacy, um, to some kind of athletic enrichment. Um, and then different things that the facilitators are passionate about. And then during the summertime, um, we're a more focused program. So we're like a traditional summer camp. Summer is my absolute favorite time of year. If I could be a full-time summer camp counselor, I totally would. Because um, it's just such a unique opportunity that you have these children all day and you can make such an impactful um, experience on who they develop to be and who they grow up to be. And so we'll take them on field trips. Every week is themed. Um, so for example, we always have a water week and so we'll take them to the Maritime Museum and teach them mm -hmm. all about kind of the natural landscape and how water plays into our everyday lives and fuels our body, but also fuels all of these things around us. Um, and then we have the sports camps throughout summer too. So summer for us is extremely busy. Um, but I think that's why I love it so much is because it's just go, go, go. <laughs> yeah. So now you said over a thousand girls? Yep. Mm -hmm. In any given what time period? Uh, so in a, in a year. In a year. Mm -hmm. Gosh, yeah. that is a lot. And from basically kindergarten through 12th grade, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we really try and focus on building our programs so that we can have a continuum of programs. So mm -hmm. for the younger ones, you know, they appreciate the after school environment and our summer day camp. The teens, we recognize need a little more independence and freedom. And so with teens, we really focus on building leadership skills and community mm -hmm. um, advocacy and giving back. Um, and then we also have our five year college bound program, Eureka. Um, mm -hmm. which is targeted for girls um, to go to college and career and, and kind of be ready for the next stage in their life after they graduate high school. Yeah, I've, I've uh, heard about the Eureka and I've heard some of the girls that have graduated from the Eureka mm -hmm. program talk and they are quite eloquent yes. and inspiring. Yeah, we have one um, who recently, I believe, just finished up her um, her degree to become a doctor. Oh gosh. Um, we have some students that are off at Harvard. We have others who went to Santa Barbara City College through the Promise Program, which is a phenomenal mm. program, um, and then have transferred on um, to four-year schools. And the Eureka program really just helps build that foundation. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a cohort model. And so we really believe in having a group of like-minded um, sisters around mm -hmm. you. Um, to help you make those good decisions and kind of have somebody to fall back on if you're like, do I want to go to this college or that college? And, yeah. Um, all of those opportunities. Gosh, that's, that's wonderful. Now, um, I bet you collaborate with a lot of different organizations and schools and, yeah. and all of that. So um, the pandemic, again, was interesting for Girls Inc. because it gave us a, an opportunity to look at the way we had been doing things mm -hmm. and kind of re-envision them for the future. Um, and so previously we were in Ventura and kind of expanding downwards and then really focused in during the pandemic on Carpinteria. How mm -hmm. can we best support our community? Um, I truly believe that we can make an enormous impact. Carpinteria is a small area. We have about 2,000 students in our district, and we're already serving about half. Wow. Um, so there's definitely opportunity um, to expand that. And so with that, um, we really focused on our relationship with Carpinteria Middle School and all of the nonprofits in Carpinteria. Mm -hmm. um, recently, there's been a group of us that we call the Carpinteria Nonprofit Collaborative Group. And we meet every couple of months and just talk about, you know, the, um, we call them thorns and roses, but the good things that are happening uh -huh. in our nonprofit, the things that we're struggling with and how we can really support each other. Um, and we see that as an opportunity to share resources and information um, because we should all be collectively working together to, mm -hmm. to make the community better. That is great. I love the idea of the collaborative. How long yeah. have you been doing that? So it's been about eight months now, and we have all kind. We have the Carpinteria Art Center, the Carpinteria Historical Museum, Carpinteria Children's Project, Carpinteria Skate Foundation. Um, some Rotary groups are a part of it. The Alcazar Theater. So it's really just a myriad of the Boys and Girls Club. It's yeah. a myriad of every type of nonprofit sector that's in Carpinteria just coming together. That is great. Yeah. You know, maybe I don't know if you've heard of this or not, but the museums in Santa Barbara have a similar alliance that also okay. came out of the COVID oh, wow. time, struggles and challenges and all. Mm -hmm. 
And so um, this sounds like a similar yeah. situation. You guys could probably learn from each other of we could. That's various things idea. to do. Yeah. No, it's been it's been really fun, and you know, um, I think any prof nonprofit professional knows sometimes it feels lonely yes. in the nonprofit world, yes. and. Um, I think really Santa Barbara is unique in that we have so many nonprofits and so many phenomenal nonprofits that are changing people's lives or you know whatever their mission is is, is really doing the work here in town. Um, so it's nice to to have that peer to peer interaction of like, can you believe hiring nowadays or you yeah, know just yeah, having yeah. having that outlet has been really great. Yeah, and to be able to support each other that is wonderful. Yeah. So um, let's see. Girls Inc. is a 501c3 nonprofit, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. so people can go on your website, for example, and I bet you have a donate now button. Yes. And they can mm -hmm. make a financial donation yeah. uh, for your good work. And um, I would imagine you depend on those financial donations. Yes, yeah. So we definitely rely on all of our grants and foundations and individual and corporate contributions. Um, one of the programs that we're looking to pilot this year is a low cost, no cost program. Mm. Um, we received an investment from the state of California, which is um, unique for a nonprofit like ours, um, to pilot this program. And it's basically an economic recovery program. So wow. to help families who are continuing to struggle, again, from the pandemic and you know loss of access to their jobs or um, being you know pushed pushed out for whatever reason and so this program is uh, to build that financial literacy so my hopes is to be able to provide our programming free for a year and so that would save families um, you know roughly five hundred dollars a month and during that it would we would educate families how do you invest how do you save how do you build that um, generational wealth so that your children are set up better better than you currently are not living paycheck to paycheck um, or at least pay down debt. Um, so I'm really excited to start that, but donations for that are critical. It's gonna be um, about a $300,000 program um, to run just for one year. So um, we're three quarters of the way there, but every donation counts. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, so I, ho I hope that some people watching this <laughs> get inspired and go on your, your website and make a donation. That sounds like a great program. Yeah, and if, if they would rather have some fun while donating, um, we have an annual fundraiser that's in the fall of every year. Uh -huh. um, and that funding directly supports our scholarship program, oh, or our financial good. aid assistance program. And so all of that funding, again, will support, um, support this pilot program that we're launching. Oh, that's good. And so a person, once again, could go on your website and find out about the exact dates of, of when it's coming this particular fall, et cetera. Yes, yeah. Good, good, good. So tell us about your seven new programs. Yeah, so we're, we're starting a bunch of new programs, um, again, just to meet the girls with their current needs and, and where they are. Um, one of the programs we launched was our mental health program, and that was funded by the Women's Fund of Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. Um, and that really the, the theme is, is there's not a lot of mental health resources in Carpinteria. So how do we provide a program where girls have access to these services um, at a basic level mm -hmm. and then we can refer them out for more in-depth um, needs. So that's been, um, that's been one that we're looking to launch um, soon. And then we have what's called our bridge program. So that's supporting girls from that transition from elementary to middle school. Oh, that's that's typically where we see a drop off because again, the teens have this newfound independence and they don't yeah. want to come to an after school program anymore. And so um, the bridge program is not only a way for Girls Inc. to let the girls know like we're in your corner, we want to help you succeed, um, but also just introduce girls to their new campus and their new school and meet the teachers before the first day so that they already feel like they have yeah. a little bit of a safety net jumping in. Um, middle school for anyone is a tough transition. Yes, yes. Um, and especially for girls because it's natural to lose a lot of friendships in middle mm -hmm. school and make new friends. And so we just want to normalize all of that. Um, and then our Eureka program, which has been going strong for um, over a decade now, we're reshuffling how we've done it for a while and adding in an additional year that girls get to go out and have work experience. So um, in the past, they only had to do one year. We're looking to have it be two years. Um, so again, that they can build that networking. We've had past externship hosts um, hire the girls after they graduate from high school. 
um, or have them intern with them for mm -hmm. additional summers. And so we really want to build that pipeline so that when girls either graduate high school or college, they already have that network of where to find jobs and you know what they're passionate in. Um, outside of that, you know, we have our sports programs that are launching that we're continuing to build upon and looking at sports leagues. Uh, we have a STEM program, a literacy program. So there's just, you know, we really want, our programs are here to meet the whole girl. Yes. And so we yes. really want to make sure that that whole girl is introduced to all of these things so that she can grow up to be strong, smart, and bold. <sighs> Sounds like you've got a good plan and you're working your plan. <laughs> yes. And all those <laughs> girls and those families are benefiting big time. Yeah. And not just right now, but in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. So I bet you might have a story or two to share with us. Yeah, I mean, there's there's always a story. You know, the um, the favorite part of my day is when all of a sudden you start hearing outside my office window the little gigglings of the girls, or my office face our courtyard, and they'll come and knock on the window and and tell me what's happening in that day. But really just in a, a general story is just seeing the girls grow year after year. Um, so I've been there about four years now. And um, so I have the kindergartners that are now entering fourth and fifth grade and just seeing who they are as people. Um, my own daughter is going into first grade and so she's been with the program for two years now and just seeing her growth and independence. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just, it really does, being in an all-girl, pro-girl environment really does provide that space for you to be who you are and try new things yes. and fail and recognize that fail stands for the first attempt in learning, right? Yeah, and and yeah. try again and get up and, and laugh when it's silly or you know when you fall. Yeah. Um, and so I think just in general, seeing the girls grow and progress into these leaders and these um, amazing humans is, is just, it's so fun. That is great. You know, I've, I read somewhere that for girls, for whatever reason, different than with boys, if girls are in a classroom or a setting of some sort and there's just girls, they're just going to be themselves and they're going to they're gonna be open and learn and that's what, but the minute a boy walks into the room or into that setting, all of a sudden, boom, they're quiet, they kind of withdraw a little bit, they don't bring their whole self mm -hmm. to the party. Yeah, and there's been a lot of studies that prove that, and I think that's why slowly, um, like all girl schools and all girl colleges yeah. are, you know, coming back. They were my parents' generation, they were all over, and then they kind of diminished for a yeah. while. And, and it's really about playing into those stereotypes, right? And the media stereotypes and, right. you know, what we're continually told, like girls aren't good at math or science. And it's like, no, exactly. we're amazing at it exactly. if you let us have that opportunity starting at a young age. And there's been plenty of studies that show the transition from elementary to middle to high school where girls who are really good at math in middle school, they start kind of digressing because they don't want to always have the answer or yes, always yes, yes. step up. And then in high school, the rates of an interest drop even more. And so we feel like our job is to continue to engage girls um, and give them the confidence to be that girl when they're in their college class to always raise their hand if they, want, if yes. they know the answer or want to say that and not feel like just because a boy's there that they can't be their whole yes, selves. Yes. Gosh, Jamie, this is amazing. Well, I told yeah. our viewers that they were going to be inspired, and <laughs> I'm inspired. I can tell you that. Thank you so much for all this wonderful work. I mean, you are really impacting all the generations to come. And so we're grateful for you, and thanks for coming on the show to share all this great work with us. Yeah, I mean, I always love the opportunity to talk about Girls, Inc. Um, yeah. I was a Girls, Inc. alumna, and so it, yeah. it really is in my blood. Great. <laughs> And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.